All right, so here's what we're going to show. This is, this is Cloud Manager. This is a product we use for instantiating and managing uh, resources in the, in the cloud. So is this All right. a real product? Uh, this is the future. A Cloud Manager is a real product, but the things I'm going to be demonstrating here are works in progress. This is not shipping, but this is real, it is not mock-up. It's real live stuff running in the lab, or, or more to the point, videos of that. We're doing that thing um, right. to make it quicker. But, but this is actual stuff. Hashtag time pro. But it's not actual, actual stuff, actual stuff we're working on. So th this is our working environment. This is basically where you create those uh, virtual appliances and where you can actually see them once you create them. So, uh, so here's our scenario. We backed up data using AltaVault into Amazon S3. Okay, that's our starting point. So we use the hardware AltaVault to get your data into Amazon S3. Now, what we want to do now is restore that data. And that was from an ONTAP system. That originated from an ONTAP system. So it originated from ONTAP to AltaVault into S3. Now we want to restore that data to uh, Azure, Microsoft to Azure Cloud, okay, in such a way that we could actually use it there. So that, that's what we're going to demonstrate. And just like, why would you want to do this? You can imagine you had backed up this database and it turns out it's your general ledger and they, now they suspect fraud and you hire some fraud consultants, but the fraud consultants aren't AWS people, they're Azure people, so now we've got to get the data from our backup on the AWS into a usable form in Azure because that's the situation we find ourselves in, right? I mean, it's, if you really go multi-cloud hybrid future, I think you've got to believe there's going to be these kind of requirements of like, oh, okay, now what? How do, I, how do I get there? So the first thing we do is we're going to create a new AltaVault in the cloud, right? This is the AltaVault C product. So let's go to our wizard here and we're going we're gonna to name it AVA on AWS. And pick the region. So we, we backed up our data into East Coast, so choose our network. Credentials. Then we're going to select our, our bucket that we want to connect our AltaVault to. So we call this Joel's Awesome Bucket or Backup. And Joel. Joel's our VP of Product Operations, so the demo's for him. Right. Should have changed it to Howard. <laughs> so here's a summary screen, little checkbox there that basically says when you hit that go button, you're going to get, start getting charged for resource utilization in, in Amazon. So let's go spend some money. And here it is. So here's our AltaVault and our workspace, okay, that we just created, and it's now connected to our, our backup uh, in S3. So the next thing we're going to want to do, again, we're going to want to restore this into the Azure cloud. So how do you do that in such a way that it's, it can actually be used there? Well, we're going to use Cloud ONTAP. Now today, we only support Cloud ONTAP for Amazon, but we're working on an Azure version of this product as we speak. So let's go fire that up. And if you've ever deployed this in Amazon, you would, you would know that the, the workflows are identical. So again, it's bringing kind of consistency for how you do things regardless of the cloud. And here, as I mentioned before, you can choose your, your form of encryption, whether you want Amazon to EBS to do the encryption for you, or if you want ONTAP to do it. If you choose ONTAP, well, you can also now plug in your own key managers. So we're going to choose let ONTAP do it. I'll choose a network here. Let's make sure they're on the same one. Credentials. And then you choose your storage type. So, you know, there's different storage uh, tiers even within the cloud. Uh, so here we're going to choose the Azure Premium Storage because that's, that's the faster, faster uh, tier. And just like before, you have a summary screen that says, yep, once you hit that go button, you know, we'll get, now Microsoft's going to start charging you money. So let's go spend money with Microsoft. And here we are. You have your AltaVault on the left-hand side in Amazon. You have your uh, Cloud ONTAP instance there in, in, in Azure. And now what you want to be able to do is actually do a restore from one to the other. This is one of those pictures that looks so simple, but just keep in mind, in this picture, on the left is one data center that's Amazon running one operating storage operating system in the cloud with one storage operating system data format. On the right is a different data center in Azure running a different storage operating system with a different underlying data format, right? So there is a lot going on in this picture that looks very simple. So how do we get the data over? So here's how we're going to get the data over. We're going to... Can I ask a question for you? Uh, so you sure. created a bucket in Amazon first. 
But I thought the data was already in Amazon. He attached to a bucket. You right. attached to it like, attached. as the source. The place that it went yesterday when we did the backup, gotcha. he attached gotcha. to that existing gotcha. bucket. All right, so the way we're going to move the data from point A to point B is we're going to drag one cloud over to the other cloud. And this invokes this wizard where, okay, now we I'm can I'm so shoot. proud of this. You know, Apple introduced drag and drop in 1984. <laughs> <laughs> but more happens in our drag and drop. I mean, in fairness, a lot happens right there. There's a lot of point, magic. Right? There's a lot of magic and steps that it executes for you underneath the covers. Um, okay, so we're going to select our volume. It's Joel's awesome vol volume, right? Select a snapshot that we want to restore. And I Just a I summary of operations. Through a REST API rather than pointing and clicking. So Cloud Manager, while I am showing a GUI here for demo purposes, has a RESTful API for every operation. So yes, you could do this programmatically as well. Good, good. All right, we're going to hit our Go button here. And off we go. We are restoring data from one cloud to the other cloud. As Dave mentioned, across two different platforms, two different operating systems. <laughs> And what's happening under, the, under here under the covers is, as I showed you in the diagrams, uh, the data transfer is happening via Snap Mirror under the covers. So we're actually using Snap Mirror between ONTAP and the Alta Vault. I think, uh, Justin, that was the, your question earlier. <laughs> Can Snap Mirror go then more just between ONTAP and ONTAP? And so. Yes. So you're driving Snap Mirror back from the Alta Vault, this time to Azure. To, it, yeah. It's going from the Alta Vault that's running in Amazon right. to Cloud ONTAP running in Azure. You know, a question I've often gotten at this point, people will say, wait a minute, did it come back to your on-prem data center and then back out? And the answer is no. It's going direct right. from Amazon to, to Azure via the Snap Mirror protocol without coming back through your own data center. But only because there's an Alta Vault instance running in Azure. Be because of the Alta Vault virtual machine in Azure, uh, in Amazon and the... In the on tap virtual machine in Azure. Right. Yeah. And this stuff starts to make your brain hurt, right? But this is <laughs> yeah. where people are headed when you go true hybrid cloud, right? Th this. So I've got a, well, like, just a question, if I can, Joe. Well, sure. Um, one of the things that might have been leveled about NetApp's products um, a while back would be that it would be very easy to get into a very complex mess of relationships between snap mirrors, snap vaults, <coughs> things going all over the place. It sounds to me like that you're opening a can of worms which could A, make that significantly worse, but you're in a position where you could be putting people in a position where they could be moving data around in and out of cloud environments that could cost them a lot of money if they don't realize that relationships don't still exist between source and target and all the metadata that maps them out. Never mind money. You could be spraying data from one country to a mile. They, Absolutely. You know, they could be on their way yeah. to jail. So this, it seems like there's another layer of... So that's exactly that, where we want to go. So you, right. you're, you're nailing it, right? Okay. So, so then it becomes, yes, if you're going to start spraying your data to different locations around the world across different clouds, different environments, how do you, how do you track it? Yeah. Right? How do you securely monitor it and track it and, and put policies in place to, to enforce, well, to enforce those policies? Yeah, so that is an area that, that we're, we're exploring now. Okay. Yep. Um, mm. uh, in this instance, you chose ONTAP as the very, you mentioned that it was ONTAP as the original source and you chose ONTAP as the eventual destination. Yep. How would it have changed or would it have changed if you chose something different? So as we, bring, like as we bring Snap Mirror capabilities to the other products, it really becomes the same scenario. Just the, We're talking about snapshot management across different endpoints. You know, Joe has a phrase I really like. It, Snap Mirror protocol is the thread that connects the data fabric. And as you put more threads in, the fabric gets richer. Right? This comes back to sort of near-term roadmap versus long-term. In the end, you'd love to have threads everywhere to everywhere, every product anybody ever heard of. In the short run right now, all that we're shipping <coughs> is the ONTAP part. But as we lay more threads in, people can do more stuff with it. I think it's useful at every step, but it gets more useful as you add more connectivity. Yep. Yeah, and data fabric, it's, it's, a, it's an evolution. It's a journey, right? So we, we showed, you know, I broke rules here showing what I showed here. I was showing you things of the future that we weren't really supposed to show, right? <laughs> um, it's not something that NetApp typically does. Um, but we're trying to show you where we're going with this, right? So it's not just an ONTAP story. It's a cross-platform story. It's an evolution, right? 
if you show, if I showed you this presentation, you know, a few months back, well, I wouldn't have had solid fire on there, right? <laughs> so it's it's going to evolve. Capabilities are going to evolve. The data management capabilities that are going to be layered on top are, are going to evolve, and this this is where we're headed. Joe, so, I just want to make an important clarification because I think there's some confusion in the room about what's available in shipping, what it isn't in the demo. All that you saw in terms of on command cloud manager. Did you, did you push the button? I did. Yeah, it's showing green. Yeah, this one was showing green too when you sent over the mic. I don't know if there's an issue. Yeah. Push it again. Are you hearing me now? Yeah, we found you have to use it every time you're not talking because latency between those and the base. Okay. But go ahead, Mel. So hopefully you can hear me. Uh, the on command cloud manager that Joe just demonstrated is shipping and available for more than a year now. Cloud on tap is shipping and available, particularly on AWS, for more than a year now. We're close to version two. Uh, AltaVault is shipping and available on Amazon already today. The replication scenarios, particularly something interesting like if I'm a developer and I don't want Amazon to go down Christmas Eve like it did last year for my key application, with one simple API call, I can eliminate thousands of lines of code that I'm writing, maintaining, debugging for replication across Amazon regions. Yeah. Cloud on tap simply enables that today, supported in shipping. So a lot of the drag and drop coolness you saw today, which is cool from a completely heterogeneous cloud concept, is shipping available and supported now for many, many months from NetApp. And, and I'll, only go, from NetApp. I'll go one step further than that. So Val's absolutely correct. If you want cloud on tap in different regions, you can do the drag and drop and you can set up those, uh, those replications uh, sessions instantly. Um, so one step beyond that is, well, it also supports NPS, right? And it also supports FAS in your data center. Right, so you can include those nodes on that cloud manager panel, um, and you can you know set up those relationships in the same way that we, I just showed here uh, across hardware and software endpoints. 